Okay, we're back here, and we got a guest today, Santiago Via Via Lobos. <laughs> I already uh, messed it up already. Um, we got him today, actor, and we had his brother on about two or three weeks ago. So we, we may um, talk a little bit about him, but of course, the show is about him today. And uh, we're also got a news story coming up, kind of film related as well, uh, with the uh, South Texas Underground Film Festival and also the Texas Archive of the Moving Image, which is also film related. And uh, so I want to say hi to um, Santiago. Actually, I already screwed up your name. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, I guess it happens. Um, see, I was I was even practicing it yeah. on the way to the car, so I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> mess up on it. Yeah. And it, by then, it's already too late. That's all right. And uh, it's, so, it's it's been butchered far more worse than you, than you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, but actually, it's kind of cool to say Santiago yeah. Via Lobos. See, now I yeah. say it good. Okay. Yeah, Tommy Lee Jones uh, told me that it rolls off the tongue. It, it's just a cool name to say. It's weird that you yeah, say that. Yeah, it is. It does. It's just that. kind of yeah. uh, Santiago. <laughs> say, say that 10 times really fast. He said it was a cool movie name. I said, thank you. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. actually. Um, now, is it that the Via Lobos, is that coming from Pancho Villa? Or because or, I know you got a little bit of history. Not exactly with Pancho Villa, but something back there. So I don't know if that's where you kind of got your last name. Um, no, actually, it's uh, it's, it's from it's Spanish from uh, from Spain, and we have our own little, you know, uh, forgot what you call them. Everybody had everybody had their little flag or whatever, you know, their symbols. Uh, it's uh, this means village village of the wolves, basically. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so you know, of course, Pancho Villa was that wasn't his real name. That was a. Uh, you know oh was it okay yeah, I didn't Pancho, that was that was a fake name oh okay. <laughs> his real name was Doroteo Arango <laughs> oh well see that's kind of awesome uh, awesome name yeah. as well um yeah. but and so we're gonna be taking a look at some of your film career you've got we got a couple of demos we got pictures in fact let's do our first picture because you're just simply so cool <laughs> and um Okay, actually, let's show you this first one. Now, this is with your brother, but since he's in the picture, mm -hmm. and I guess you got a distant third cousin, sure. uh, once or twice removed. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you better say his last name because I'm going to mess that up too. Uh, Quinones, John Quinones. And he does that show that I've seen too. Yeah. Uh, uh, what would you do? I believe that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what would you do? And uh, I have. It's funny. I have watched it quite a few times. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's uh, a he's a third cousin. Um, uh, he didn't he didn't know we existed though. <laughs> oh really? Sure, just, we sure knew he existed. <laughs> oh okay. I didn't know if you just like discovered by accident. No, or... we just uh, since we were kids, would they always uh, they they would always name off the cousins and uh, you know and he was one of them. And then when he started uh, you know his his work in New York and all that with the shows. And, uh huh. We're like, wow, hey, but th th we're related to him, you know. We, you know, we, we have. A well, it's kind of cool because <laughs> now you're. It's kind of like in the family a little bit. Yeah. You got him. You got you and your brother doing yeah. the acting thing. So uh -huh. it's it's very amazing. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, I also wanted to take a look at one more picture. Sure. Um, how about uh, Antonio Banderas? Yeah, there we yeah, go. Yeah, Antonio. And w now, where did you meet? Was it all in the one place you met most of these people? Yes, or? sir. Uh, I met them at the at the 2011 Alma Awards, which is uh, held every year in uh, in Los Angeles, California. And uh, that was a, it was a it was a cool surprise for me, really, from my my good friend Julia Vera, who uh, is originally from Laredo, Texas, and has done tons of work in uh, Los Angeles, in Hollywood. Um, she was one of my inspirations when I first became an actor, and uh, uh, I finally got to do a movie with her here in South Texas. And uh, at the time, it was called Benavides Born, and then they switched the name to uh, All She Can um, for promotion purposes. I guess they, they okay, you know, I guess they said uh, you know the Benavides Born wouldn't probably be a good, you know, a good sell, so they changed the name. But uh, uh, I was doing a sh I was doing the show. Uh, we did that movie, and then we did the show. Uh, I they uh, flew me out to LA to do the second episode of the uh, the Deadliest Warrior uh, okay. on Spike TV. So yeah. they flew me out and I put it on my Facebook. And I began to be, you know, the doing the show for the weekend. And Julia texted me and she said, "Hey, wow, well, that's so cool that you're here. I have an extra ticket to go to the Alamo Awards. Would you love to go?" And I was like, 
Are you freaking kidding me? I'm like, since I was a kid, <laughs> I've been wanting to go to the AMA Awards. That's like, that's like oh, the Oscars wow. for the Hispanic people, you know? <laughs> so, wow, yeah. So she had an extra ticket. I mean, she could have gave it to anybody and she was, you know, uh, she, she said, you know, I, I, you're here, this, this would be a great, you know, uh, present for me to you. Would you love to go? And I said, sure. Definitely, yeah, definitely. But she, um, there was one thing she didn't tell me though. And what's that? She said, you, she goes, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go to the AMA Awards. I said, great. So she, we got, you know, she, we, she said, dress up really nice. And I had my zoot suit. That's just how I fly, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I always oh, wow. put on my zoot suit. And uh, I did the show that, that earlier that, that in, the, in the afternoon. And then that evening, I went to her house and there was, she had a limo there waiting for us. We picked up a couple of other actresses. And uh -huh. I was like, oh my God, I know you. Oh my God. I, I, just, I watched you when you was a little kid, you know? So I was already flying high on these, you know, I was, you know, starstruck with these uh -huh. actresses. And uh, since I've watched since I was a kid and we get there and uh, I'm thinking, you know, I'm just waiting to get in the door. You know, so many people there and I can start seeing the limos pulling up and um, we're there for about 20 minutes. And uh, they're trying to direct the people one way to get into the, you know, to the arena. And yeah. I kept saying, well, Julia, shouldn't we get in line to go to, you know, get in the in the venue? And she's like, oh, yeah, wait a minute. No, no, we need to get over here closer to the to where the red carpet's at. And I was like really i was like why you know they're not gonna let us in there and um, we got close to the red carpet and she turns around and she goes oh here's another secret of mine um surprise we get to walk the red carpet with it with all the other famous actors and oh I'm wow like, i was like what because she she held that out she held out that was a little surprise for us because that movie uh -huh. that we did all she can yeah uh, got picked up by uh, my entertainment and they happened to show it on HBO. They were showing it on HBO. Oh, wow. They were showing it on the movie channel. Huh. So we were we were on the bill to 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 walk the red the, the red carpet with all the other celebrities. Did they and, did like tell your name? That's uh, Sunday. Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. They they did all of that, and I, I was wow. like, oh my god. He's like, I was like, Julia, why didn't you let us know? You know, that was a little surprise. And wow. uh, yeah, so that's why that's I was pretty able awesome to to. Uh, uh, I was able to walk the red carpet with all the rest of the you know the celebrities, wow. and I was up there you know taking pictures you know the paparazzi all that kind of stuff. So well, yeah, that'd be kind of awesome. At first, you're like, should we? You know, like, can we? You know? <laughs> yeah. So okay. Um, before we get uh, too much, we're actually going to take a look at one of his demo reels. Um, I can't remember if it uh, it might have been in two twenty. 13 or uh, 2012, something like that. But we're going to take a look at it, and I'll show the many films that he works on, worked on, and we're going to come right back. Santiago, are you ready? Please go! On three, two, one, pack them up! Viva Villa! Joining Fernando, early 20th century firearms expert and great grandson of one of Villa's generals, Santiago Villalobos. Pancho Villa to the Mexican people is known as the Mexican Robin Hood. He'd take all the riches from the rich landowners and he'd make them sign everything over to the peasant. What is Pancho Villa's favorite strategy and tactic? It is called El Golpe Terrifico, which means the terrific blow, or as I like to call it, the ferocious blow. What is a perfect example of it? The second battle of Torreon. All right, we're gonna use the touch table and go there now. It is March 20th, 1914. It is the middle of the Mexican Revolution. This is where he launches El Golpe Terrifico. He attacks and uses the cover of darkness against them. And constantly harassing them. These guys aren't getting any sleep. The Federales, they're getting scared now. Pancho crushes this position, and this terrific blow becomes this legendary threat any time Pancho Villa comes into an area. When a man like Pancho Villa comes along, the people are gonna rally and follow him because he fights for what's right. Be careful. And don't tell anyone where you got this. I won't. Come here. Put your pants down on this side. I'm just gonna draw.
anywhere in here. Right now? If you can't do it now, you probably won't do it later. I know what you did! What you do, Hector? Oh, yeah? What are you gonna do? Hmm? Huh? Check out this dude, thinks he's all chingon. What you gonna do, boy? She's doing okay? Está bien, sí. Qué bueno, qué bueno. Yeah. Sweetheart, so, around here, we gotta be careful. Well, Virtually, we don't know anymore. I left three blocks away. My friend Danny lives around the corner, too. Yeah. Danny Ortega? Sí, lo conoces? He's a good kid. He's a, he's a buen amigo mío. He's a good friend of mine. Come on, just give me the money! I know you got money in it! It's all right to me! Okay, 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 just, 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 just point it away, please, please. Okay, okay, okay. Hurry up! I got all point it for you, please, please, just point it away. Give me those homes! Are you kidding us, Mirando, Vato? Gives you the right to kill any certain men. Men who have their names on warrants. Warrants like this. You ain't no deputy. Yeah? City deputy. Me, sheriff deputy. You say tomato, I say tomatillo. Regulator. Okay, we're back with Santiago via Bo. Uh, via <laughs> I screwed up again. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll just call you Santiago there for yeah. short. Be a yeah, little bit fine. easier for me. Um, uh, I got more practice. Um, and I love the uh, the demo reel because, um, of course, the the very first part of the demo reel, uh, the, the the deadliest warrior, which I've watched before, mm -hmm. and that particular episode, uh, I actually I must have missed. And I used to come back every week just to mm -hmm. make sure I watched that show. And plus, it does tie in. Like I said, I love history. And uh, I believe you mentioned before that um, one of the generals for Pancho Villa is uh, uh, your great-great-grandfather or something like that. Yeah, Can you so, uh, give us a little bit of information on that? Uh, uh, my great-grandfather, uh, well, this is what my grandfather used to tell me. He used oh, to tell okay. me the stories. And uh, he said that... Uh, he had a, you know every time uh i was at their house you know and, and i was a kid I, I was like oh no my grandfather's gonna, he's gonna tell me another freaking story it's gonna be boring you know because he, he took forever to tell these stories and um well one of them actually was interesting and that was the when he would talk about his dad being in the in the in the revolution um you know his dad is named uh, jesus and uh and my my mother even remembers him saying yeah i remember he always always was with his musket even if they went to town he never mm -hmm. he never uh was he was never uh, unarmed he was always armed and that was you know that was here in, uh, in texas um so he said uh you know when he was younger you know he joined up with pancho villa had to go through the ranks and um gain his trust because pancho villa you know he was yeah he didn't just trust anybody so uh he proved his worth <clears throat> went on a few uh, battles with him 
And uh, I mean, according to him, he you know became a general. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. So, uh, but did but didn't go you know didn't last the whole thing. You know, he decided to uh, become a family man, cross the border, that kind of stuff. So, so he ended up like. Um, I, I guess when it's uh, years later, then obviously he kind of stopped doing that and, yeah. and settled down. Yeah, so. he decided to come settle. And but he he, rem he always uh, he would always mention the battles, but I could never remember the names. And uh, he would say, "Well, the, this battle and that battle." And um, you know, one time he you know he did this and that. I'm sure he he uh, he polished the story somewhat because they just seemed like right out of a movie. <laughs> but, I, well, yeah, it could. <laughs> but be. you never know, you know. My, but my grandfather wasn't a guy to lie either, so. Um, okay. He he just told the story as his dad told him, you know. Uh, he was a he, he was he was one of a kind. Just, he was what you call man's man, you know. He didn't didn't lie. He didn't uh, you know uh, okay. make up stories. He was just straight up, you know. This is how it is, and he didn't have to lie to anybody. He just you know was just that kind of man. So I believed him, you know. Uh, There's oh, no okay. reason for me not yeah, to believe him. Yeah, of course. And uh, I believe your grandfather was also. I'm trying to remember. A grandfather was in World War Two as well. Yes, my so. other grandfather on my dad's side. He went. He fought in uh, World War Two in Guadalcanal and um, got injured. He he won, uh, I believe, uh, two br uh, two bronze stars. Uh, you know, um, the Purple Heart and all that stuff. Uh, got okay. his combat infantry badge for being overseas. You know, fighting and um, and, and he was uh, he got injured and he 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 stayed injured. I think I believe it was his hip and his leg. Um, uh -huh. he, he, he was, you know, he's, he remained wounded for the rest of his life. I always remember him on a cane oh, uh, and, wow. and he tried, when you try to talk to him about the, you know, he was calling, he would call him the Japs. <laughs> I know that's not politically right now, yeah. but, uh, he, he goes, I just, he didn't like to talk about it. He just said, let's just say I killed a lot of Japs. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Those are some, uh, I guess bad days, uh, yeah, but yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting part of history as well. Mm -hmm. Um, so your history is very interesting. Um, now we're also going to take a look at um, a little of, and uh, let me. Oh, I haven't said hi to my brother yet. I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> here you go. All right, go ahead. What's up, back? <laughs> What's hey, up, doing Holmes? We call each other Holmes. I, <laughs> Holmes. I think he said that uh, on this on his show. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, did he? I must have missed it. I yeah, gotta watch that. He he said that hey, we call each other Holmes. That goes back when we were little kids. Watching Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna add. Uh, add well, I asked you earlier in the pre-show. I was like, "Is is your brother gonna be watching, or you know?" He might be. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. I don't know either. That you can, they catch the uh, pre-recorded yeah. show. Yeah. So uh, everything's good. And uh, actually, I want to take a look at. And I went to it, which is stuff. This is mm -hmm. the South Texas Underground Film Festival right, right here. Uh, and I've never been to a film festival, and it was like really awesome because. You get to talk to the directors, the actors, and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I even made a comment in one of the movies, which I can't remember what it is because I, I missed some of it. There's a couple of uh, important phone calls I had to do. But I said, you know, my favorite character was the housewife. And then all of a sudden in the back, she goes, oh, thank you. And I was like, <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, you were great in that. So uh, it's kind of yeah. funny where um, you get to see that. Now, also, we're going to take a look at the um, Texas Archive of the Moving Image as well. And uh, we'll be right back because I want to talk a little bit more about the film festival and uh, get a new store on that. We're here at the Art Center, downtown Corpus Christi for two local events. The South Texas Underground Film Festival running from November 13th to the 16th. And also the Texas Archive of the Moving Image. Texas Archive digitizes old films which would otherwise be lost due to deterioration. So I am Caroline Frick and I am the director of the Texas Archive of the Moving Image. We are an organization that is dedicated to raising awareness about the value of old movies as Texas history. And what we do is we crisscross the state with a bring out your films campaign. So anything that you've got at home, whether it's an old family film or an industrial film, educational film, whatever you have, um, we offer free digitization. In return, we will retain a copy after returning your films to you, we retain a copy for our digital library 
at texasarchive.org which is used for educational purposes. So we now have over 22,000 films digitized with about three to 4,000 online. Um, it's pretty exciting. You can see everything from what we think is the earliest footage of um, Austin back in from the 19 teens. We have footage of uh, uh, early, early Houston and we're hoping to get quite a bit from the Coastal Bend region while we're here in Corpus Christi. And we're back uh, with here. Santiago, as you noticed, I didn't see his last name because I <laughs> messed it up yet again. And I want to talk a little bit more about some of the film festivals, not necessarily just the South Texas mm -hmm. Underground Film Festival, because that's a way to discover a lot of these movies. And I, I happened to catch um, Santiago's brother's movie, uh, The Golden Skull, which is Michael Christian's, and which I, I thought was awesome. And a lot of the other movies really... Uh, good as well, and so I want to give your uh, thoughts on uh, some of these film festivals. Actually, you missed the one that um, this one here locally, but you mm -hmm. did go to the one in San Antonio mm -hmm. uh, for the your movie showing over there. Can yes, you sir. tell this? Uh, tell us about it as well. Yeah, uh, I I wanted to attend uh, the um, Stuff Film Festival because uh, a buddy of mine um, and his wife run it, Robert, Robert uh, Perez. Uh, I've worked with him before, and uh, I've got a good mind, you know, uh, um, got a lot of great stories. And, um, but um, he's been successful with this f a particular film fest festival. And, uh, and my brother, like you said, my brother had a film on it, and unfortunately I had to miss it because there was, they were promoting my film in San Antonio, a film I just recently did called The Book of Ruth. And um, I had a, a, a pretty decent role in that one. Um, so I attended that one. Uh, because the the director was like, "Hey man, we really need you here," you know, and uh, you know you you big part of it, and uh, you bring a lot of people with you um, uh, when you when you come to a, a you know a, a film premiere or stuff. So I said, "Okay, you know, I I, you know, I, I gotta go," you know. Uh, but um, and it was great. We had a great turnout. Uh, we showed it in San Antonio, uh, and it, that that film is doing the film uh, circuit right now, the film festival circuit right now. Uh huh. Uh, it's in the Marfa. Uh, uh, film festival is in San Antonio. So that that was pretty much the premiere. Was the one in San Antonio about uh, uh, two or three weeks ago, right? Yes, sir. Uh, it was yeah. It was, it was the San Antonio premiere. It had, it had premiered at, at other festivals. Oh, okay. Uh, but because we're there, uh, that that film production is uh, based out of San Antonio, so they needed to do a San Antonio premiere, and that was the first one. Oh, yeah, that so, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, and um, now. Of course. Now, I did catch, like I said, uh, your brother's one, The Golden Skull. It was an uh, excellent movie. And uh, I think as well, I think they are still editing it. Even though it premiered there, they're mm -hmm. still editing it. They're, they're going to highlight certain areas and then going to re-release it. So I'm hoping to see the re-release as well yeah. uh, on that. So uh, good on you, Michael. Yeah, that was, a, that was a good little film. I saw it, and uh, I'm ready to see the, the final cut. The f yeah, the final cut. <laughs> the Everyone's final cut. And um, if I can find my uh, cursor here, um, we got some more pictures here, I think. And uh, let's do uh, uh, Seagal or Seagull and Johnny Knoxville, I believe that's the name. Oh, Catherine Heigl. That's Catherine Heigl. Catherine, oh. Catherine Heigl. <laughs> I spelled it <laughs> First, I think it was okay, yeah. And Johnny Knoxville, yes, sir. Yeah, see, um, I totally screwed that up. Okay. That's all right. It's all right. Uh, Catherine was. Mm -hmm. uh, Kind of unknown back then. She was uh, up and coming. She'd done a couple of uh, shows. And uh, everybody knew who Johnny Knoxville was because he had done the Jackass uh, movies, movies and all yeah. that. And uh, so he was kind of starting. He was crossing over into, like, the regular film instead of doing the, you know, the crazy acts on, on that show. And uh, I had a great, great uh, time on, on, the, on this movie called The Ringer. Uh, it was my third film. And I didn't want to do the film at first. Uh, I was trying uh -huh. to get on to another show with Tommy Lee Jones. And I had auditioned for him recently for the movie uh, La Tragedia de Marca, uh, Macario. Um, I think that's what it's called. Or no, the three. No, it was called the three deaths of the three burials of 
Might be Alice Estrada. <laughs> I don't oh, know if you ever wow. heard it. Um, but I auditioned for that and I almost got the role. And uh, But I got to meet Tommy Lee and uh, Jones. And uh, he talked with me quite a bit. And I got to meet Guillermo Arriaga, which I was like, I had no idea he was going to be there when he got there. That's probably why I didn't get the role because I I, <laughs> oh, yeah. I froze when I saw him. I'm like, <gasps> that's the guy from <laughs> Amores Perros. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you had like a quick uh, stroke. <laughs> yeah, and see, and I was green back then. I had just started, so um, I, I wouldn't freeze like that up anymore. You know, I've, yeah. after the experiences um, I had, yeah, yeah, it's really hard because I mean, I, I've I'm not saying I've met, but um, there's uh, when I was in the military, I went to a couple of Navy bases, and they and they had some people there. Um, unfortunately, the lines were really long, so you know, I kind of looked at them from a distance, yeah. um, but. Uh, and then, of course, I went to RealmsCon and uh, met some of the uh, uh, f- a couple of movie actors for The Crow, the original oh, Crow, yeah, uh, were yeah. there. So got to talk with them. It's very interesting to see the whole process. Yeah, something you can't really do with, you know, uh, unless they're there or something like that. Which is great when uh, for having film festivals, you can actually talk with these people and, and find out behind the scenes and things like that. Mm-hmm. And it's cool when you when you uh, when you meet these people because you know I had just done the Alamo with Billy Bob Thornton, uh, you know Dennis Quaid, and coming off of that film, and I, I had done that film. I mean, I was locked in that film for at least a year. You know, the the training and you know the uh, you know the reenactors and you know did, we, we were doing a lot of prep work before we even started um, filming. But I met a lot of the you know the the. The guys behind the scenes, you know, the, the the producers and you know people who work behind the cameras. So when we did the Ringer, uh, half of that cat, half of that crew from the Alamo was on this film. So I was like, oh man, it's my old buddies from the Alamo, and um, <laughs> yeah. so they kind of got me some more work, which is kind of cool when you get those buddies that you know. Um, I was supposed to do like three or four days, um, the, as you see in the picture. Uh, I'm in the uh, uh, I'm in the soccer referee uh, uniform. And that was it. My, my my thing was supposed to be like three days, and, and then that was it for the film. I, w- I was wrapped. But they said, hey, man, uh, you want to keep working? I'm like, heck, yeah. Because let me let me, uh, let me me go over here and make, pull some strings, and I'm going to get you some more work. They wound up giving me like at least another two weeks worth of work, and it was just supposed to be three days. Um, so that was cool. I got to spend some more time on set. Um, I, I was in, in a different role, you know, and but uh, – Got to hang out with Johnny Knoxville and and Catherine Heigl. Like I guess had Catherine, so nice. I mean, just very approachable. Uh, uh, but uh, when I asked her, "Can I have a picture with you and Johnny?" He, she was kind of like, "Oh, Johnny's reading his newspaper. He's he doesn't like anybody <laughs> to approach him when he's wearing his newspaper." Oh, really? So we had to wait for him to finish the entire newspaper. But during that time, I got to know her, and I was like, "Man, this is a this is a nice gal, you know." And just uh, she. Just telling me about how her, you know, she's oh, wow. aspiring and she wants to keep going and, and telling me not to quit. Just keep going. You know, you, you'll make it eventually. And so I just took that. And I'm like, wow, what a nice girl. You know, that I wonder if she'll remember me now. <laughs> that I was a long know. time ago. That was like 10 I, years ago. But. I don't you get it really. You got to really say something off the wall. Yeah. So next time you're saying, yeah. but you remember that time I said, oh, yeah, I remember you. OK. Yeah. But then, you know, she she uh, we Johnny put his newspaper down. He goes, OK, now, you know, you can you can approach him. So we went up and. I said, hey, Johnny, we kind of talked to him for a little bit. And he's like, oh, yeah, man, any, anything for you, man. Let's take the picture, you know. So he's a cool cat. Uh, I, I enjoyed the hanging out with him, being in a scene with him and all that. And now, now I didn't I didn't know this. You said you, you played in the Alamo with uh, Time Lee Jones and who else? Uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah, Billy Bob uh, Thornton. Dennis Quaid. Yeah. Uh, um, Emilio Chavaria, who's from Mexico. Uh-huh. He plays Santa Ana. Um, uh, what's the other guy's name? Oh, my God. He was in the. He played Bowie in the movie. Uh, oh, okay, he comes uh, at, Jim uh, Bowie. Or, yeah, he, he, he plays yeah. Jim Bowie in the movie. Uh, I just I forget his name. He he was in the, he was in the Lost Boys. He played the the, the brother of uh, uh, the, the guy they're trying to get to go over and become a vampire, and they wind up the girls with them. And oh shit! Yeah, no, I can't. My mind's and, a blank. Yeah, he was in <laughs> Speed Two. You know, Speed Two with uh, Sandra Bullock. I can't remember. Oh. I, his my his his name just. Uh, I don't know, it slips my mind, but he was in that film. Um, but Billy Bob Thornton, man, he was he was great. I got to finally meet him. We became actually pretty good buddies. Um, we didn't. He invited me over to this hotel, and uh-huh. uh, we'd be drinking up, you know. And uh, oh, wow. he fell in love with my zoot suit. That's what. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. I wear my zoot suit. I remember we were talking about the zoot suit earlier. Yeah, I know. And yeah. um, 
um, I was in Austin, and a friend of mine who's actually uh, Robert Rodriguez's sister, uh -huh. um, and she comes out in all of Robert's films. Her name is Patricia Vaughn. Um, she it was her birthday, and she said, "Oh." It's my birthday and I'm playing and you better wear your zoot suit if you come see me. So I'm like, oh, I just happen to have it. I'm like, okay. I never leave home without my zoot suit. So I, I, oh, I wow. put that thing on, went into town and um, she was just like, oh, I can't believe you wore it, you know? So I, I hung out with her a couple hours and then um, then my buddy, who's a stuntman, uh, David, he called me. He's like, hey man, uh, I'm gonna be at the hotel. Come hang out. So I went over there, not knowing I was gonna meet any, you know, be uh -huh. Billy Bob Thornton. Yeah. Uh, I went into the to the uh, the, the they were they were all staying at the Omni Hotel downtown in Austin. Okay. And uh, I went and got me a you know a drink from the bar, and then the next thing I hear, I heard my name. I'm like, like behind me, and there's all the stunt guys I had been working with. Oh. Hey uh -huh. man, get over here! And so I'm all saying hi to him because we were. I mean, I was working really closely with the stunt man, um, and uh, they were trying to get me onto that stunt team. Um, but anyway, they all knew me, and uh, and they just kind of ushered me over to this little this. You know this gentleman and at first i didn't recognize him until he talked and he was like hey man oh, i really like that suit hey my name is billy bob thornton i'm like oh my god <laughs> billy bob thornton you know oh wow <laughs> so he i sat down right next to him and we just talked away the whole wow. night yeah it was so did, cool did you have like one of those fedoras with the feather yeah, yeah. oh really yeah yeah with, yeah, yeah, yeah the wow. big feather and the yeah the, the fedora and um yeah he and wow. he just he he was really impressed with that suit and, and uh, I, I was waiting for the right moment to uh, take a picture with him, and uh, the picture's on my Facebook too. And uh, um, and I was just waiting. I go, man, should I bother him with the, with the picture? And you know, back then, you know, it was early two thousands. Yeah, uh, we we didn't have them phones where you can just pop, bust up the camera. On the oh phone. yeah, we had them little th them cheapy throwaways. You know, the the you get at Walmart. <laughs> Probably like flip phones, no camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was just little... I had my little camera that I bought at Walmart and. Uh, and so I, 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 you know, when he was ready to go to up to his room, I was about to ask him, and he was the one that actually said, "Hey, man, can I get a?" Can uh, he actually he asked me if I can, if he can get a, a picture. So somewhere in his archives, he's got a picture of me and him. And so he, and then I asked him, well, "Can I get a picture?" And he was like, "Oh, definitely." So I got a picture, and then he got a picture. So you, you know, what I'm betting though, he he's got he got a picture of you. He's wanting that zoot suit so he can Photoshop his face. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, probably yeah. not. But yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's um, a great Billy Bob Thornton uh, um, uh, story. You know, there's oh, a, there's that, a couple yeah, more. But, you know, uh, he, he, after that, he just, he, he saw me on set. He called me over. Hey, Santiago, come over here, you know, hang uh -huh. out. And um, so I'd hang out with him on the set. And we'd, we'd, you know, a couple other weekends, we'd hang out in the, at, at the hotel and drink, you know, drink up. You know, he likes to drink a lot of wine, so. Uh, well, at least he drank wine then. And, uh, so I was like, oh, cool. And he had like his own uh, special variety or something because he wasn't ordering from the from, the, uh, the regular yeah, menu. He had yeah, his, he had his little stash down here. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. This guy's he's, he's, he's you know, wine, wine guy. Yeah. I actually am I'm kind of too. I still drunk, drink beer, though. There's a couple. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I don't want to drink wine. Yeah. Uh, but, it just depends on the mood you're in. Yeah. Beer or wine. And um, Dennis Quaid, uh, that's another. Uh, he's a. He's a kind of a weird one. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. He. Uh, they told us because um, once Billy Bob was wrapped, you know, they, they they brought in Dennis. I mean, they did a couple of scenes together, but uh, really, he when they wrapped uh, Billy Bob, they brought Dennis in, and they all put us in a, on a bus, and then they gathered gathered us around and said, "Look, Dennis Quaid is not Billy Bob Thornton. He do not <laughs> do not approach wow. Dennis because Dennis is one of those guys that likes to be." Um, you know, bothered when he's on set because everybody would go and you know, and Billy Bob is very approachable. He'll tell you, "Come on over," you know, oh, everything really? was cool. Wow. Everybody's hanging out with him, but Dennis is just all serious. You know, you see him on the on the movie set. You just, you know, he's just like he just, he looks like he's mad at the world. You know, but wow. he's just really in character, I guess. And they told him uh, they told us not to go, but a couple of guys went anyway. And I I saw him, man. I go, don't do it, don't do it. The guys went up there and asked him for an autograph. And he was nice enough to give him an autograph, but Dennis, uh, he, he, I'm kind of putting him out there, but uh, he he told those guys, get these guys off this set. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> but um, I met him actually at the Willie Nelson concert uh, that week, and uh -huh. we I met him at the um, Saxon Pub right after the okay. Willie Nelson concert. But, you know, Offset 
when he's by himself, he's cool. He he, oh, he approached okay, me and sense. he was like, yeah. "Hey man, you're on the Alamo." I go, "Yes, sir." I go, "Man, you're Dennis Quaid." You know, I was like <laughs> starstruck too because I used to like him when I was younger. You know, and uh-huh. I saw him on DOA and the right stuff and all that. I'm like, "Man, you're you're cool, man." And he, we sat there for about 45 minutes and just uh-huh. BSed and um, he bought me a couple beers and man, we just we hit it off, man. But uh, those pictures are lost because back then, like I said, you know, oh, the, yeah. the, 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 I had you know two prints and everybody wanted one and it was like. Oh, so it's gone. I, I can I I lost my pictures of me and Dennis Quaid. Oh wow, um, let's stop right there because we got some more stuff coming up, and I think it's some couple of interviews about some of the movies you were doing with um, some other people. It's actually sure. kind of interesting, so we're gonna see uh, see that right now. Cool, act kind of guy, but is but he's always trying to get the last word in, or he's trying to get the chick, or um, and he's a hitman, you know, but. <laughs> He's a lovable hit, man. He's all about the action. He's all about the, uh, you know, let's go kill him. When it's time to work, it's time to work. You know, he, let's go do it. Let's go kill him, kill him all, let's, and then go get a beer and get laid or something, you know, something like that. Oh, I'm sorry, did that belong to you? But he's always trying to up Ruby. Him and Ruby are always at each other, and then Ruby knows everything. Because deep, deep down, Ruby knows Montoya could take him. Who's the better assassin, Ruby or Montoya? Depends if Ruby has his laser sight on her. <laughs> oh, well, okay. It'll be over. <laughs> My toy is not going to be back. <laughs> Something happened in production. He, he actually got shot. <laughs> no. Um, I said when it comes down to style, it's, it's Montoya. It's Montoya, but just brute force, put them down, take them out quick. It's Ruby. I think if it was hand to hand martial arts, of course, Ruby has the secret arts. Probably Montoya doesn't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he was, tr- you know, trained by Hirohito. You know, if it's a ballroom brawl that just spontaneously breaks out, I think Montoya would curb stomp Ruby. <laughs> but if Ruby actually sets it up, sets it up, he's, oh, yeah. he's Mon- fucked. Montoya's a dead. He <laughs> actually might get Montoya to do it himself. Yeah, like. Casino. <laughs> I ain't going out like no rap. <laughs> So, yeah, we're going to say it's a draw, but in the yeah. comic book, Ruby's the man, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, why, you know. Why do we call you Montoya anyways? Your name, Bossa? Yeah. Why do we call you Bossa? I don't like Bossa. I like Montoya. Gentlemen, Montoya. please. You know, prepare, prepare to die, Montoya. Come on, man. Like man. What's up? Bossa. Sounds pretty tight, doesn't it? You know what Bossa means, man? No. What? Foot. Basa means foot. Gentlemen, Your name is Foot Montoya. Man, shut the fuck up. Man, your mama named you Foot Montoya. A friend of mine named uh, Ernest Martinez, uh, we had worked together a couple of times on a few movies, and he called me one day and said, hey, man, there's a film production. needs some couple of guys to you know do some stuff. I said, okay, where do I go? So uh, I went down to this little warehouse thing and met director Brett Mauser. And... Uh, he uh, wanted to kill me. So uh, I died for him about 30 times the first day. I got my head chopped off. And I thought that was it. And I got a call again. Hey, I need you to come back and die for me a couple more times. So I said, okay, I'll do that. Went back, and then I kept getting called back to go die some more. So. <laughs> and then that was it. So, uh, he, and he called me, and he goes, look, um, I had I had a cancellation of a guy. He couldn't make it up, and Brett really needed to shoot the scene uh, with this character named Montoya. And uh, he had given me a call and said, "Look, uh, I'd like to read you for this role. Can you come up?" So I said, "Yeah, sure, I'd come up." And so I read for him, and he said, "Great, you know, this, you want this role, you can have it." So I said, "Yeah." And uh, I I showed up to set, and uh, Bradley he, <laughs> he gave me some sides to the to the film, and. He goes, yeah, you got one scene, and you just memorize your lines. It was like three or four lines. <laughs> and then uh, Brett goes, so are you ready for your second scene? And I said, what second scene? He said, the other scene. Didn't you get the sides to the, to the film? And I said, no, I got sides for one film, or one scene. <laughs> so he gave me the, he gave me the, uh, the script with...
Yeah, it looks like uh, we're kind of off the air for a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, I'll uh, check the uh, the footage and hopefully uh, we can get that fixed. Um, we're back here with uh, San Diego. Uh, I, I don't know. This is a good example. Do you guys have any problems on the set? Uh, technical problems that pop up? All uh, the time. Oh, my God. It's, uh, it's Sometimes it's a nightmare with certain things. You know, even on the big caliber, even on the Hollywood, you know, uh, you know, they, they have big problems sometimes, too. You know, it's a lot of waiting. Uh, you have to be patient, and, you know, they'll say, okay, we're having this problem, that problem, a lighting problem, you know, uh, uh, we can't film because the sun's not a certain way, you know, so, you know, there's always some, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, so we just lost it again. Okay. Oh, wow, that's... Wow, yeah. Well, we're still recording, so... Uh, okay, cool, cool. Um, so even though... Um, uh, we lose the internet connection. We'll still be able to record locally and throw it up, whatever YouTube or wherever. So okay, uh, okay. we'll we'll be good with that. Yeah, that's cool. Thank goodness. So um, yeah, of course, with the technical difficulties. Um, so if there's any, uh, I don't know. I guess sometimes like you you wouldn't be able to shoot for a full day or something. Um, I don't know if it's yeah, been that. actually. You know what? I think that happened one time. Yeah. Uh, and on the Alamo set, uh, we were supposed to shoot and, uh, <clears throat> we shot maybe for an hour and then they, some problems came up and, uh, they said, okay, you guys go back to, to the holding area and we'll get back to you. And they came back like eight hours later <laughs> and oh, said, wow. go ahead and go home. <laughs> and I was like, what happened? Man, we've been waiting there forever, you know? And, um. And they just say it was just, you know, technical, te you know, technical problems. So it happens, you know, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, you lose it, you lose time, but uh, eventually, you know, it, it, it always gets made. You know? Well, hopefully yeah. the film gets made. Actually, that kind of reminds me of a story I've read on, I don't know if you know the original Jaws, you know, yeah. uh, I believe John, I don't know if it was John Carpenter. Well, anyway, it was Jaws and of course they had the mechanical shark yeah. and they, they yeah. really had a lot of problems. Yeah. Filming the, the mechanical shark had stopped working. Yeah. So there's a lot of scenes where, you know, they, they didn't do nearly as much uh, mm -hmm. of the shark. And, and then it, it had like seaweed stuck between its teeth yeah. or, you know, the yeah. whatever, you know. So they're constantly messing with it. Yeah. So. Uh, but it actually worked to their advantage because uh, I saw an interview with, uh, with, the, with the director and it said, you know, in that it just like less was more, you know. Yeah, and, I think and, you know, so. Because yeah. they couldn't get that shark the way they wanted it to work, but what they did get, it, I mean, it was just it was more of a build up, and you know, and it, yeah, it actually think, just yeah, worked out. It, it, it worked out right, for the film, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, that part is good. Uh, we uh, we still have some time, um, just in case um, we start. Could you tell us a little bit where? Um, we can contact you if, uh, you know, for, hey, film, any uh, film mm -hmm. uh, actors that they need where they sure. can contact you and uh, yeah, all that. So. Uh, my, my email address is uh, ellobocarnal at yahoo.com. Um, that's E-L-L-O-B-O-C-A-R-N-A-L <laughs> at yahoo.com. Uh, I also have a Facebook. I believe it's... Uh, Santiago dot Villalobos seventy seven. I could be mistaken, but that's that's my you know my page. Oh, okay. Um, so you can get a hold of me there. Um, I'm always getting hit up for you know something. When, when I just did a uh, a movie recently, um, through a friend of mine, uh, Lydia Blanco, who is also another uh, she's also another inspiration of mine. Um, cause she was actually one of the first actresses from this area to get up and go to LA and be successful out there and do a lot of shows and movies and work with like Tom Hanks, you know, stuff like yeah. that. And, um, she called me up for a, for a role and she oh, uh, auditioned nice. me. Yeah. We, and we filmed out here in El Campo, Texas. And, um, uh, I, I don't know if I should get my, my phone number. <laughs> get <louder. laughs> Yeah. Personal. I'm like, yo, hey, how you doing? Yeah. No, but you know, I mean, I, I don't, I don't mind it. I mean, if yeah. you need, it's a, the, Three six one six three three fifty two fifty nine uh for you any filmmakers out there wanna you know, and, get a hold of uh, me. It's kinda of funny when I talk to your brother like for the same thing and yeah. and I mentioned like uh I, I was talking to this one actor at RealmsCon and, and he was kind of, you know, a little a lot like Dennis Quay or during that certain period of time mm -hmm. I, I think there was something that was going on with him personally. Yeah. And so 
And I figure, you know, I figure maybe certain times people, you don't want to be bothered. And your brother yeah. was like, hey, I don't care, man. Call me any time sure. of the day, night or day, oh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. Facebook, you know, oh, come yeah. your door, knock late at night. I don't care <laughs> as long as it's a roll. Yeah. So, um, it, you mean, yeah. uh, I'm definitely approachable. Um, uh, sometimes you get, um, you don't have a lot of time. I mean, remember when, when uh, all these, all these roles were coming up and I was busy and on the road and, and having to do this show and go to LA and come back and do this and that. Um, a lot of people, I was hot then, you know, and then people yeah. were just, I mean, my, my phone was blowing up, my emails, my Facebook, you know, all that stuff. And um, it was hard to, to try and, and, and answer everybody, everybody's questions or everybody's comment. You know, it, 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 it takes a long time once you have that many people, yeah, you know, definitely. so, um, you know, I would always tell people, hey, just be patient. I'll, I'll, I'll get to you. You know, I don't like to diss anybody. You know, if you ask me a question, I'll definitely Especially Answer. if you get more well known, yeah. it's going to be hard because you got so you want to answer them all, but you just don't have the time. Sometimes so you, you got to just time, select, yeah. you yeah. know, whoever. Um, and uh, you know, sometimes people will be like, "Oh, he, he's too good to yeah. answer my email." I wish I had that problem. <laughs> and it's not that; it's just you know, I had a lot of. Th I'm, I'm answering so many other emails and, and comments and stuff, yeah. and then you know, I try to remember. Oh, oh, I got I to go back and answer. You know, that, yeah. that one lady or that one guy or whatever. Okay. Um, we're uh, we're gonna go ahead and end uh, today's show. Uh, we're gonna upload it as well, probably in the next couple of days. Stick around. We're gonna have um, the tech webcast coming up very shortly. In fact, I gotta start Skype on that. That's if the uh, internet stays with me. Ugh, <laughs> I have a feeling it's not gonna be very happy. But we we are do have the show uh, on record. Until then, uh, you know, see you guys. Can I tell those guys from Corpus Christi? Oh, what do you got? Yeah. Hey, uh, um, uh, to all the Corpus, all Corpus Christi, uh, all you filmmakers out there, man, I uh, hope you guys, um, you know, do good and go out there and keep doing more films and, and you know, represent Corpus because, um, you know, we need to get on the map. We need to get up there with Austin, Houston, San Antonio, Dallas, you know what I mean? So uh, there's a lot of good talent out there, and uh, uh, i just like to help you guys out, whatever, you know, this if you need a good actor for something or, you know, I've even done some behind-the-camera uh, work, so, you know, Let's uh let's get together corpus. Okay, see you guys next week. Peace.